sorry for the heat. We continue. We're reading from Romans chapter number 8, verse 28 to 29. And it says, And we know that all things work together for, for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he knew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And I would like to share with you a story uh, as I share on the topic, all things work for good, for our good. All things work for our good. A story is told about a mother who had a baby called Paul. And the mother loved the, the, young, the young boy so much. At the age of two, the mother left the boy sleeping and went to fetch some vegetables from the garden. And the story says that the, while the mother had gone away, the house in which the boy laid caught fire. And when the mother came, she was restrained by the people who were standing there saying, it is not possible for anyone to get into the house for the fire is too much. But the love of the mother would not restrain her from getting into the fire. She, he went in and got the, the son quickly, but in the process she burned her hair and there were a lot of uh, marks on her face. As the boy was growing up, she, he was very disappointed that the mother was very ugly. His, his colleagues at school mocked him and said, look at your ugly mother. The boy grew up hating his mother until one day when he heard that the mother had died. As he was looking into the record of the mother, he noticed that the mother had written that on a particular day, he got into a burning house and rescued his son from the fire. And that's how she lost her hair and lost uh, and got uh, marks on her forehead. If I were to rename this message, I would have, I would have, remained, I would have called it No Pain, No Gain. The Bible in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, talks about a very common verse. Many people quote this verse always when they are in trouble. When things are working for them, they quote this verse. This is the most memorized verse in the Bible, yet is the most misunderstood and often most quoted. So I'd like to, to share with you three things that come in my mind as I think about these verses. This verse 28 and verse 29. The first thing that comes in my mind is that, that God, this verse does not mean we can live anyhow. We choose and God will fix our messes. It is not, God is not always going to treat us very well because he is a good God, because he is a loving God. But the Bible says all things work for good for them that know the Lord, them that have been called according to his purpose. If I were to ask you two questions, the first question would be, do you love the Lord? And the second question would be, are you called according to his purpose? So, it is important to know in these verses that God uses a bad situation to create good for us, for particularly those who, who are called by his purpose. This verse is a promise 
to believers, those who are living according to the dictates of Christ, those who are living according to the laws of God, not on those who claim that they are believers, yet they live like Satan himself. This verse says to those who love God and are doing his commandments, sometimes even evil, evil comes their way. It is for good. God uses a bad situation to make good things come from it. That's why I think don't pay no gain. Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. The Bible calls it the rugged cross. Meaning that out of a bad situation came salvation. Out of a bad situation came deliverance. Out of a bad situation came our redemption from our sin. In Romans 5 Verse, chapter 5, verse 3 to 5, it says that faith and grace produce suffering. And suffering produces perseverance. And perseverance produces um, character. And character produces hope. And this hope does not disappoint us. It's how it means suffering is part of our lives. Pain is part of our life. But God is using our pain. God is using our character to build our faith, to build our hope and trust in Him. So even when we are facing the virus, this deadly virus called Corona, it is important to know that God uses such situations to bring us to his knowledge, to bring us to his power, to bring us to the understanding that he is God. So, very important that while you live is important to God. God has called us out of darkness and to his marvelous light. Point number two that I want to address this morning, friends, is that God can use all things together for good. He does not say all things are good. No matter how nice things may look, no matter the lens you use, cancer, corona, HIV, AIDS, accidents and deaths are not good things. Until Jesus returns and conquers Satan and sin, bad things will continue to happen. Sin will continue to be in the world. And, and, and sometimes the devil makes us see sin and Satan as powerful. But the good news is God is more powerful. He, has, he is able to redeem and restore anything for our good. But God can also use a situation that is not, that seems to be bad to heal us, to make us better people. Many people are hardly home uh, before the virus. Many people were watching football up to late in the evening, late at night. Before the virus, many people are staying in bars and restaurants and, and pool sites. But now this coronavirus has done a good thing. Families are now reunited. Families are now praying together. Families are now eating together. So it is not all, all that is gloom, but there is something nice that is coming from this situation. God can use anything to bring glory to his name. In Romans 8 and 29, and, and, and 20, 28 and 29 reveal, now that's point number three, that the ultimate goal, goal of God is to accomplish his love and grace in his people. 
Though the situation is not good, but God wants to establish himself. God wants to accomplish his goodness and his grace in his people. The Bible says, for those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the, to the likeness of his son. There are two things why Jesus came to the earth. The first point, Jesus came to die for our sins. And his death on the cross meant we received eternal salvation. Our sins were plotted away. We are no longer condemned. We are no longer going to die for our sins. The second thing that Jesus did when he died on the cross, so that those who are born again may continually conform to the image of his son Jesus. The Bible says we were created in the image and likeness of God. And God, Jesus, is the true reflection of the image of the Father. You can read this from, from Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Jesus is the true reflection of the Father. It's the true image of the Father. And because of that, when we love God, when we come closer to Him, we are continually becoming more like Jesus, more like His grace, more like His love, more like His patience, more like His miracles, and more like His glory. God is interested in us growing closer and closer to Jesus. It is not how much you have done in, in, for God in this in the church. It is not how much tithes you have given. It is not how many times have you attended church conferences. It is how much you become more and more about Jesus. And there is a song that says, I want to know more about Jesus. And it is true, through the, the revelation of Christ, God wants to accomplish his grace and his power in his people. God is interested in our lives, friends, and his power will be made manifest if we draw near to Jesus. The Bible says, when I am lifted up, then I will draw men to myself. God is interested when we worship him and glorify him, because then he will come in the midst of the praises. He will come in the midst of people who know him and are willing to serve him even in difficult situations. We, we find perhaps the greatest comfort in Romans 8, 28, in the first three words, and we know. The word means we have no doubt in God. It means we rise above the normal circumstances. It means without doubt, God is our all in all. We can rely on his grace. We can rely on his power. Suffering for a long time is associated with the sovereignty of God. The story that is told about suffering in the Bible it's told about a man called Job. And the Bible says this man loved God. And this man was rich. And this man hated sin. But Job became sick. Job lost his property. Job lost his children. Yet he, he constantly says, 